Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Dominions 5. My name's Mew, in the beginning there was chaos, and now the wheel has turned once again. We're playing as Late Age Flegra. Uh, i got some back-to-back -back Late Age games on the channel for those of you who love Late Age. Uh, we're worshipping a different current employee, the Myrmicoleon, and we're playing on a custom map called East Unsea. Uh, you may have seen this map before if you've watched other games on the channel. I believe it was used in the Kamatan series, which was a Nation Gen game. Uh, Nation Gen and Magic Gen. This is not a Nation Gen game or a Magic Gen game, it's a pretty standard game. It is running the J. Brereton Balance mod, however, which is the standard balance mod that we use in games on the Ruby Discord. And it's also running Snow.dm, which gives everything in the game snow movement. Uh, besides that, it's pretty standard vanilla stuff, and I don't think there are too many changes to Late Age Flegra, so. Things should all look pretty standard. We do have a new unit we can recruit though. The Cyclope Flinger, who comes with a sword and a fire sling, which is pretty cool. And there are some minor changes when the volcano blows up as well, but you know, we'll get to that later. Uh, for the time being, here's how things look and here's the map. We've got a kind of a nice start, I think, because, you know, we're in kind of a nice defensible position. In fact, if memory serves, this is the same start location we got in the Kamatan series, right? or well, somewhere slightly nearby. It seems very familiar either way. But yeah, I like the fact that we have quite a narrow choke um, to our south, which means we probably only have to worry about neighbours here, or may possibly over these uh, coastal connections, I don't know. But more likely the only neighbour we'll have to worry about will be to the north of us. We also have quite a few farmlands accessible to us. There's one in our cap circle and one adjacent to it, and then one adjacent to that. Oh, actually, this isn't a farmland, it's just a... I see, it's a harbour, okay. So this is a farmland, this is not. But even so, that's uh, two farmlands there. And then there's one here as well. And I get the feeling, I think maybe these are large provinces, even though they're not farmlands. I could be wrong about that. Can only see one throne next to us if we don't count the underwater one. So that might be a bit of an issue. Got some wastelands, might come in handy. Some mountains might come in handy. Uh, we even have quite a bit of resource in our cap, don't we? Because we've got a forest here and a mountains here, so... Yeah, I quite like this starting location. Could certainly be a lot worse. Could certainly be a lot worse. Uh, we also have our starting dominion in a plains province. So, as you can see, I'm going to send my god out to attack it on turn one. I'm not sure if I've ever done blind expansion in a game on the channel before, but I'm pretty confident about this guy. Uh, we have a uh, Bless, which is... I mean, Bless is kind of weird on Late Age Flagra because we don't really have anything sacred, right? The only really sacred thing we're going to be deploying is the uh, Oppressor Archon. I don't think any of our other mages are sacred. None of our units are sacred. So when it comes to picking a Bless, it's like, well... We're either thinking of a Bless for these guys exclusively, or we're thinking of Blesses for our God exclusively. Or we're going to be putting shrouds on people. Uh, in my case, I just picked this guy because he has easy access to fire and earth, and I thought, you know what? He expands pretty well. And these paths let us cast all of the fire and earth globals with no boosters. So, it seems pretty good. And with those paths, this seemed like the best bless we could get. Reinvigoration's useful for our god. And also for our mages, and Fire Shield is, you know, kind of unimportant for our mages. But also kind of useful for our god, I suppose. There's also mountain survival in it. Uh, but the Reinvigoration and Fire Shield, I mean, it's pretty nice to have on the Expanding God, I suppose. So since our Dominion is here, we shouldn't have too many problems with anything in the plains. I don't think. I could be wrong. It's possible that a lot of crossbows hit us and we take a lot of damage. Uh, or stop bleeding, which would be really bad, because we don't have any kind of mundane resistances. Lots of range units might be a problem. But I'm still willing to risk it, because I think it's probably going to be fine. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. It's a nice province as well, 97 income, 32 resources. So I'm going to head there immediately. Uh, we do not have a starting scout. I'm not sure if that's vanilla or if that's a JBBM thing. Uh, no idea, but either way, there's not anything we can do in terms of scouting. One thing that is quite nice is that our H1 priests, one of whom we start with, do reduce unrest, which is kind of cool. I'm going to have this guy just parked in my cap for a, for a bit preaching until I need him to build temples, I think. 
Allegra does cause, I think either causes unrest or causes turmoil inside the Dominion, I'm not sure, but either way, we do something bad with our Dominion, and on top of that I do have Turmoil 3, so you know, lowering unrest, probably pretty decent. That's something at least. If you would like any more details about the god that I made, the bless that I went with, magic, units we can recruit, or anything like that, I will have covered all of that stuff in the intro video for this series, so go and check that out if you are interested in that sort of stuff. Next up is recruitment for the turn. Uh, we have three commander points in our cap, so the best way to make use of that is to recruit multiple commanders. In this case, uh, I'm going to get one of our Cyclops out. I'm going to try and recruit as many of these as possible early on for two reasons. One is they give us resources, uh, which makes it a lot easier to field large armies quickly. And the other reason is just because they're big. Our Cyclops refuse to be led by anything that isn't large. So we're going to need a couple of big commanders to actually lead them around. And Cyclops fit the bill. Uh, so I'm going to get as many of these as I can early on. I do also want to do a lot of early site searching though, so I'm going to have to get some of our multipath mages out too as well. Um, but certainly while we're doing expansion, I just want resources in the cap quickly. So I'll get some Cyclops out. That leaves us with one commander point left over. So I just keep up another priest. Again, it's nice just to have a couple around to do some temple construction and stuff. We don't have anything else in the way of <laughs> sacredness, so besides my prophet, the only thing that can build temples are uh, these guys. Uh, and these guys want to recruit them, so why not? We don't have a huge amount of gold to play with on turn one. So I'll slot those guys in. And then units-wise, it's hard to decide what to do exactly. We can either get three sheep, or two giants, or five of the little guys then a couple of archers. Uh, I went with five little guys and a couple of archers. I think mostly because I'm just a fan of like raw numbers in the short term, I don't know. <laughs> you know, one thing that is tempting, it's tempting to just recruit two Cyclops this turn and three next turn, and not expand with my profit next turn, because we're already expanding with our god this turn, so if we don't do anything with our profit next turn, we'd still be, you know, we'd still be on the normal number of provinces. I could just recruit giants for two turns, stick them in this army with um, a Cyclops leader, and that would probably hold up for quite a while. You know, these, ten of these, five of those, a profit. Um, but I, I think, personally, I'm quite a greedy player, and I like to expand as quickly as possible. So I think what I'm going to try and do is I'll, I'll just recruit this now. We'll send the profit out next turn, and I'll probably just reinforce from the cap each turn and just try and take my cap circle while we uh, bulk up this army. And pretty quickly we'll have enough resources in our cap that we should be able to recruit large armies of giants every turn, maybe with some sheep as well. I think that will be fine. We might slow down a bit. We um, take the cap circle and then can't move straight to a secondary ring province, but I think it'll be okay anyway. And the earlier we get provinces for expansion, the quicker we can bid on mercenaries as well. Which, by the way, there are mercenaries this turn, but it's Urgek Beast Brother, and I didn't really think they were worth a bid. Although, I mean, we could min-bid Urgek with... Or even just put in the 39, I mean, why, why, why not? We might get him. It's pretty cheap, nobody usually bids on Urgek. But you never know. So yeah, I'm happy with recruitment like this, we will expand with our profit next turn. Uh, who is going to be this guy, currently researching. Our god is named a different current employee. I can't remember what this is a reference to. No idea what this naming scheme is going to be. But let's go with... Next job could be... Actually, would you all fit? Your next job could be Panto Panto. <laughs> it does fit. Alright, there we go. So this guy can become my prophet. And that, I believe, is it for turn one. So I'm just going to partial while I check the video, uh, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a moment. Hello, welcome back. Turn 2 is usually just spent reading proclamations, so let's read some proclamations. Uh, first up, Arcacephaly. She wither my weapon till I die is the prophet of withering weapons is good. August Lady, patron of necromancers, queen of the dead, goddess of eloquence, mistress of marriage. I don't think I've seen that epithet before. Sounds like a very death-themed god. At Pythium we have Hair-Raising Hydras, is a prophet of Pythian Powerhouse, Mistress of Metals, the Unsleeping Goddess, the Unshakable. Lots of mistresses. 
At man, we have searched for sites. Uh, as the prophet of didn't find any. <laughs> sites? Okay. Um, patron of herbalists, master of the forest. Chumon, we have spooky frog noises. Is the prophet of frogs of unknown origin. The personification of strength, master of the sunny ground, lord of forgiving. Gotha, we have I didn't start in a cave. <laughs> The prophet of <laughs> setting in my cave. <laughs> the mountain lord, the fortifier, the armorer. Uh, cool. Uh, Abyssia, then we have. Oh. <laughs> we have an unnamed commander. Very disappointing. Is the prophet of scenes in games that aged poorly. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at one. The vessel of might, inventor of science, the raging master. Uh, Midgard, we have Internet White Knight, is the prophet of Animated Body Pillow. Queen of Navigation, the Everlasting Mother. That's kind of a funny epithet. Uh, Tamer of Demons. Uh, Flagra, there's me. Your next job could be Pantocrator, is the prophet of a different current employee. Lord of Volcanoes, God of this world, Prince of Flames, he who stole the fire. None of those are very funny epithets for our name, but then again, I'm not sure what could possibly be a funny epithet for our name, to be honest. Uh, Atlantis, we have Eerie Suspense Horrific Fear, is the prophet of Stonehenge Surprise, Keeper of the Celestial Records, the Self-Created Master. Erethea, we have Handsome Yoga Trainer, is the prophet of Loving Together Couples Therapy, <laughs> the Most High, Opener of the Ways, Brilliant One in the Sky. And that is it for proclamations. We did also have a battle this turn, though. A rarity on turn two. But uh, yeah, it looks like we've rolled into a heavy cav province, but quite a small one. Small one. We have two mounted commanders, a little priest in the back, another commander over here. We've got five heavy cav. A couple of militia. I mean, that's pretty good as far as blind expanding goes, if you ask me. And goes our Myrmacoleon, is that what you're called? Myrmacoleon, I think so. Uh, we are Berserkers, and we've got 23 base protection with our Earth power. So once we go Berserk, we're on 28 protection. Not bad. Uh, we've also got a little bit of reinvigoration to cancel out the fatigue and encumbrance from being Berserk. But uh, not really much to see here. Some guys killing themselves on our fire shield. We shouldn't really have too many problems expanding into stuff like this. Sending the god out on turn one is also kind of nice because he's a pop killer, so I guess we've spared some of that in our capital as well. Pretty nice. And how much health did we actually lose doing this? Let's see, we're on 109 now. Uh, did we start on 129? So I lost 20 hit points. And that includes with a cavalry charge, so not bad. There's red. Um, I don't suspect we'll have too many problems if we hit provinces like that with our god. Especially if we've got a little bit of uh, help from our dominion. Have our bless on us. But that is it for messages, and here is the map now. Uh, first thing first, since it's LA, you can see quite far. I can see that Calum's capital is here. So there's a bit of space between us, but not a huge amount. Can't see anyone over here yet. I can see that the person north of us is Utgard, and they are pretty close. Uh, we are almost touching cap circles. Uh, very, very close to touching cap circles, but not quite. Can also see Irathea here, in fact. So quite a lot of neighbours we can see already. For better or for worse. Um, hasn't really changed where I want to move too much, though. It would be nice to get these provinces, I suppose. But it would be really nice to get over to the farmland here, even though I can't see how close that is to anyone. What connects this island? Oh, nothing really. We'd have to take these and get our heat... Oh, well, yeah, we'd never be able to cross because of our heat skills. And anyway, that's what we can see so far. First neighbor we're going to bump into is going to be Utgard, probably. Uh, and as for Indies, lots of stuff around here looks pretty similar. I've uh, got two nice provinces in our cap. Rid was, I mean, it's 84 income currently with some unrest, so pretty good. 
I'm going to start queuing up some scouts here as well. Uh, Molten that we can now also see with our Dominion is also a 10k pop province, so these are both going to be really nice. Give us a nice little income bump at the start. Not much in the way of resources, but you know. Uh, this is also guarded by light infantry and heavy infantry, so it's pretty easy to take as well. Kind of nice. And here we can also see light infantry, heavy infantry, and a few crossbows. Farmland, same thing. Light infantry, heavy infantry, some crossbows. Not much variation. You can actually see the crossbows here though, so probably more crossbows than heavy infantry in this one. Uh, based on what we can see now. And sending game up here. Light infantry, heavy infantry, crossbows. All similar numbers too. Where do we want to go this turn? Well, my god has quite a few options because he can go quite far. Uh, the options in our Dominion aren't really that interesting though. One is Moloton, which I'm going to hit with my army anyway. The other one's Broken Land, which is a wasteland. And doesn't really let us go anywhere because these provinces are in God's cap circle. And this isn't passable at the moment. It should be once our Dominion spreads, but not just yet. The Swamps does kind of interest me though, because if we could get up here, we could maybe take this coast, which would be really nice. And it would also lock in this province for us. And this province is probably going to let us recruit nature mages. And that's pretty interesting because we don't have any access to nature otherwise. So it's a bit awkward going in this direction. We're very close to people. It doesn't give us many places we can go to either. But my thinking is, I'm going to try and take Scatly Swamps with my god this turn. It's extremely small, probably not a very good province, but we might push our Dominion a bit around here. And I figure either we can press on to Ivan Moor and cut this section off from Utgard, or if Ivan Moor looks really hard or something, we can probably just go into Broken Land, and by that point we probably have heat skills here and we can just move down to Curtain Wall or something. So I think we have enough options going this way that I don't hate it. It would be weird if it got also blind expanded and was here and now went into the swamp. So I don't think we're going to bump anybody. And even if he's moving out this turn, I don't think he prioritizes a wasteland either. So I think it's safe to just do this bit of the movement, even though it's probably not immediately useful. But it would be nice to get this eventually. It's going to be hard for my god to take because it's a bunch of weird stuff. Bloodhenge druids and dark wines and stuff. I hope this lets us recruit nature mages. I think it should, but <laughs> I could be wrong. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go that way and hopefully just lock in some of this territory for us if we can. My starting army, I'm probably going to go to Moloton and then just loop around to Amphalia. Um, so at the moment, I've got the army set up like this. I've given all those units we just recruited to my prophet. Um, this province doesn't seem to have any ranged units, so we just on hold while we fire and uh, do some smiting, and they walk towards us. So I don't predict we'll have many losses here, if any. And then that lets us go down to Shade Forest at full strength. And then the turn after that we can hit Amphalia with either just our profit or maybe some giants as well. Might send the giants up this way, I don't know. If things seem really good, and this maybe this looks small. I might also send my profit down one, and maybe we can just get a giant army out to go this direction on its own without needing to reinforce. I don't know. It would be nice to get some of the resource provinces in our cap early, but they don't seem too bad at the moment. I can already recruit our three cyclops, which is nice. They're limited recruitment, so you can only recruit three of them. So we already have the resources for that. So another Cyclops Smith will be 20 more resources, plus this province is 35 more, so that gives us, what, two Helots? I mean, that's sufficient, <laughs> why not? Two Helots and a Cyclops every turn. Uh, two Helots and three Cyclops every turn, that'll be fine, right? And maybe we'll get a nice mercenary company as well soon. We did not get Urgek. Uh, apparently Abyssia really wanted them, <laughs> they outbid us, which is a shame. Or not a shame, depending on your perspective. But uh, for now, yeah, that, that's how things look, and that's what I'm thinking at the moment, but we'll see how things pan out. Nice to have a head start on provinces, though. Recruitment for this turn, yeah, is just more Cyclops soldiers and just a smith. I don't have the gold to queue up an additional commander this turn, so we're wasting a commander point, unfortunately, but it is what it is. 
I would rather get another smith out than get, you know, you up two oppressors or something just because of the resources. Uh, we might also get an uh, Cyclops as well, which would be good. I could do some site searching with him eventually. Oh, that brings me to research, yeah. So we are doing a little bit of research now. Not a lot, but um, a little bit. I'm probably going to go to construction too first just to make our quills. And as soon as I get some kind of uh, mage, I'm going to walk them around site searching. It would be nice to get an A2 mage, but I think the only guy we have that could get that would be this guy. If you rolled air here. So it's like a 25% chance and these are slow to recruit and we're not getting them yet. So it's going to be a while before we have an A2 mage, unfortunately. But as soon as I get an A1 mage, we'll just uh, look for some air sites. Get a few ur gems, make some alquils. Might uh, counteract our drain skills a bit. Yeah, but that currently is it for turn two since we don't have a scout yet to move around. <laughs> Just got two priests in my cap uh, reaching. But uh, scouts are on the way now, which is nice. Anyway, that's it for turn two. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a moment. Hello, welcome back. Uh, late proclamation from Utgard. The auditor you don't want to see is the prophet of Dangerous Machines Regulation Act. Lord of Flies, Tower of Strength, Eater of Children. And then we had two battles. So first up, my god, hitting some archers, a couple of militia. I mean, <laughs> nothing terribly threatening. Missing the reinvigoration does, um, it does make a big difference though. I guess we're also in a swamp, so that's more encumbrance, right? Yeah. Previous battle we ended on like 10 fatigue. This one we end on about 50 fatigue, so you know. Kind of a difference. It's a small province and not too bad. There's scatly swamps. Next up, Molotan. Uh, so on the report this didn't say crossbows. It turns out there are four crossbows. Besides that, we've got some light infantry and a few heavy infantry. Just changing some crossbow bolts. I am on hold because I didn't think there'd be ranged units, but... There were, so... It takes us kind of a while to get through the heavy infantry. We then just start routing. <laughs> Not a great showing. Uh, my profit was on advance in Caswells because I just thought this was an easy province. Finally, make the heavy infantry route. This guy's now hitting my crossbows. So, this is going to be one of those games. Uh, <laughs> I expected to take this province with zero casualties, instead we bounced off it. Classic. At least this guy's crippled, so he's taking ages to get off the field. Gives this stuff time to route, which is uh, fantastic. So what do they end up with? Well, we lost half of our helot soldiers, two crossbows and the two archers. Not great. The province does now only have one light infantry, one heavy infantry, and one and uh, four crossbows, maybe. Much diminished now, and our profit survived at least. I mean, I suppose that's something, right? Maybe it would have been better if you died at that point. <laughs> Could just made a cyclops my profit. Uh, that's it for battles, though. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, I don't know why that went as poorly as it did. I mean, if I'd seen crossbows on the report, I would have shoved stuff forwards. But I, I just, I don't know. Seems odd. I guess I should have got the giants on turn one. <laughs> uh, live and learn. Anyway, this turn I'm just going to go back into Molten. We've got this stuff over here on my Prophet now. Prophet lost an eye, I think it was. Yeah. Not a huge deal. Uh, he's still has, he still has seven soldiers and six crossbows. They're at the front. They're on fire attack archers and fire archers to try and take out the crossbows quickly. Maybe that's good. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just going to bring out the stuff from my cap now as well. So we've got a couple of giants coming out too. Uh, and a few more crossbows. I'll put the crossbows over with my uh, 
pretender once it merges up. And yeah, we're just going to walk around our cap circle, reinforcing from our cap. That's all we can do now. <laughs> so, recruitment's going to be the same. Uh, we didn't really change the resource amounts in our cap this turn. And we're also short a bit of gold, since we expected to have more gold from Molten this turn. The good news at least is that we're not like behind schedule on expansion, because we did get a province on turn 2. But uh, it's a shame to lose that lead we had. Anyway, we should take Molotin this time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Uh, we got scouts now in red, so I'm going to try and scout God's territory, see so exactly where they are. Since I still think they're going to be the most immediate threat. I could be wrong though, I mean Erythae is right here. Uh, and as for my God. Tricky to know I should still press on. Slight infantry's crossbows and heavy infantry, and it's outside our dominion. So we miss out on fire shield and reinvigoration. And um, <laughs> slightly nervous about large numbers of crossbows because they, they might um, do quite a lot of damage to us. Might move forward a bit as well. I like being back a bit because it splits up the melee troops. Because they're going to be slightly different speeds. But um don't want to have to walk too far while they're getting hit by crossbow fire. I'm going to try and take it over for the same reason as I said previously. I mean, it would be nice to just ring in these two provinces. I'm hoping we can take the harbour before Erythea gets to it if they go this way. And then at that point, yeah, we can lock in Red Bud Grove, which isn't a bad province. 50 income forest. And it would be nice to put a fort in Jerob then at some point. Um, so I'm going to try and take it even more. Hope it goes okay. <laughs> it also puts us adjacent to Mewforth, which, you know, as always, seems like a province we should have. But yeah, the scout around here will help. We'll know exactly how well Utgard's expanding. Next few scouts I get will probably go that way. And then I need scouts here, here, and here. Uh, very disappointed about that little mishap. I don't really know what else to say, though. Hopefully we can still have good expansion. Uh, there are some nice mercenaries this turn, but I don't know, I think I'd rather just have the usual recruitment at the moment. Hopefully we can fix things. Uh, that is it for this turn though, not much else to say at the moment. Research is still pretty slow. Shame we have to move this guy out. Technically I don't need to move him, I could just research this turn. We can just merge up in Shade Forest next turn with uh, everything. Because this can probably take this province fine. But um... I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to lose any more units now, is the thing. I just wanted to bring overwhelming force, you know? <laughs> I think I'm just going to do that. It's fine. We're 10 research per turn behind, I suppose. It's... Okay, expansion hasn't gone great. I'm just going to hit end turn. It's fine, though. It's only turn 3. We can, we can come back from that little setback. Uh, well, that was turn 3, and that is the end of the video, so... Thanks for watching. It, it can only get better from here. See you next time.